Okay, now we are sitting inside the RV. Uh, we, we are here at Sanford in Florida. We're going to show you how to configure the autopilot once you install it in your airplane. Okay, so the, the autopilot has uh, two switches that you have to install. Okay, one is the autopilot disengage, which we have it here. Normally, people will have it in the yoke here. And that's a, a push button that you press to disengage the autopilot. Then we have a switch. I have, in my case, I have two switches, but normally it's only one switch to disconnect the five volts to the servo. And this will allow us to uh, disconnect the the, uh, the servos in case there's a runaway so you can still control your plane once you disconnect the servo the trim tabs will tend to uh, uh, become neutral and you can fly your airplane normally so very, very important to have your servo disconnect switch and your disengage switch ok we install the autopilot more or less in the center of our panel some people may want to have it above near the top but the farther you have it from instruments or from electricity, radios and, and uh, magnetic sources, the better the uh, magnetometer will work. It has a, a magnetometer inside. You only use it for taxiing uh, or for when the airplane is uh, at standstill. Uh, after 20 knots, the, the heading will convert itself to a GPS heading. So you will have very accurate uh, tracking information. So the, the autopilot shows magnetic track. Okay, so this is our autopilot. If we press the right button, is the right button. Then we go to the menu. Okay, we have disengage, level flight, heading, altitude hold follow airspeed, GPS steering, CDI navigation, approach, hold, arc, and service mode. Of course, we have shutdown. If we do shutdown, we will turn off the units. Today, we're gonna be talking about service mode. So these modes are, uh, these modes are kind of hidden so that not everyone can uh, mess about your parameters. When you do service mode, you get the service mode password input here and then you rotate the knob okay the service mode password 10 will give you all the parameters that you need to adjust the autopilot so we got 10 then we press the left button okay and we're on page one and here we have ball rate Okay, the ball rate has to synchronize with your radio. Okay, if the ball rate is correct, you should get information about the, the go-to waypoint. In this case, for us, it's a, a Daytona Kilo Delta Alpha Bravo. It should appear here and the number of miles. Okay, uh, when you change the ball rate, this one, you should turn off and on the unit okay you change the number here rotating the knob 9600 nine, uh, press the bottom and then you have to restart the unit for the ball rate to take effect very important okay we press again the left bottom we click on the knob and we go to the next uh, menu show magnetic heading if you do yes, uh, since the autopilot works in magnetic track with your GPS, magnetic heading will show your magnetic uh, compass heading with this with internal uh, with, uh, with internal magnetometer. So you have a little arrow showing. Let me put yes here. You see this little arrow here. Okay, this little arrow will normally be uh, uh, in another in another 
direction because of because the the autopilot works in magnetic track and the arrow is uh, uh, man, uh, magnetic heading. Okay, so that's that one. Here uh, we have three sources: one, two, and three. Uh, that's why you're going to program if your GPS navigation is going to be NMEA aviation data or none. If you don't have it connected to anything, that's your NMEA cable, you put none. If you have it to an MA, NMEA GPS, you put NMEA uh, or is it, if it's uh, aviation data GPS, you put aviation data. Okay. Then you have NAT2, NAT1, not, not sorry. This would be if you're using the optional ARINC connection or the optional SL30 connection. We have a, an ARINC radio here on top and an SL30 as COM2. So I configure mine as ARINC for NAT1 and NAT2 would be SL30. And then the heading source, uh, we suggest you use the internal GPS of the unit. And this is the most precise. You can also use your magnetic, it's your internal magnetometer. But if the if the if this radio is not connected, is is if this uh, instrument is not far from wires and electrical disruption, the magnetic heading will not be very precise. So always put this in internal GPS. You can always use your, your external, uh, but it's not necessary. Leave it as internal GPS, and that's the best way. So that's page one. Page two will show all your roll and heading variables, like gains and limits and stop. So for this, to adjust your roll, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. We have a, a different service mode which is much easier it will give you it will take you step by step so we're going to fly the airplane and go through those modes but this one you can uh, you can use it for small adjustments if you want for more advanced uh, adjustments of the roll and gain that's page two page three same for pitch and altitude lots of parameters you don't have to fiddle those around because there's an easy adjustment in, an, in other service modes Airspeed gain for your airspeed uh, follow. Page five is a CDI gain. We actually have a CDI needle here. Okay, that you, uh, the the autopilot can follow that needle, so that that parameter will help us adjust how good it, it follows the the, the path. Uh, okay, magnetic calibration. Magnetic calibration, uh, after you fly for one hour, say, and you, you do turns to the right, turns to the left, the internal magnetometer of the unit will do a self-adjustment, but it won't save. So after you fly for an hour and you want to save that magnetometer adjustment, you just go rotate the knob and do save to ROM. You click here, and you will actually save the magnetic position of the magnetometer. Don't forget the magnetometer is only used when the airplane is sitting on the ground. Uh, after 20 knots, you're going to be using your GPS track. So, but it's nice to have the magnetometer so that you can orient yourself when you're waiting to take off or whatever. Then the, there's the cage. Again, the cage is to adjust the artificial horizon the attitude indicator you want to have it in the center so uh, I, we recommend that you cage the unit after two minutes of uh, power on and then you have to wait two minutes uh, for the calibration to take effect so this is a four minute uh, four minute step so if you do cage the air has is being caged Should appear soon. Okay, it's right on the center. And then you have to wait 
one minute for it to stabilize itself. Okay, after caging, of course we need two minutes for the unit to stabilize, uh, but we can continue with the rest. Okay, we go back to page six. Okay, we've done the caging, the barrel units. Here you can choose from inches, rotate the uh, rotate the knob and you can go to uh, ectopascal or you can show both if you do both the autopilot will show here minibars and uh, inches of mercury EAS is the indicated airspeed units you can have knots miles per hour or kilometers per hour Altimeter units, you can have feet or meters. Page 7. Okay, page 7. Uh, it is unlikely that the autopilot will, will lose its calibration for altitude. But if you want to recalibrate the altitude, you need to... Uh, you can either do it uh, in the air or on the ground with, a, with, with a, an appropriate static source that you can change. For example, when it says low altitude calibration, you should be kind of, kind of on the ground. You see here we are at 20 feet, and we adjust the low end of our uh, of our altitude. Okay, when 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 we calibrate, we accept changes. We say yes and accept them, or we go to page eight, or and and we go to page eight. We go to an altitude, preferably something like 10,000 feet. We won't do it now on the ground because it has to be different to 47 feet. We have to go up to 10,000 feet, adjust the value here. It could be equivalent to another another altitude source that we have. And then we do accept changes, yes, and then we click. If we get lost, we can always erase. We, we, we turn the knob to the left and we can erase all the calibrations. It will go back to factory default. Only, only, only the altitude will default at this stage. Okay, so we won't do anything. Page nine, the same thing with the airspeed. We can, the low calibration can be done at say 50 knots, which is your stall speed or whatever. And then page 10 will be your high indicator airspeed calibration. You can do 150 knots or Whatever your airplane is, is a higher speed, 100 knots, whatever, you you adjust the values here. And that's the end of the service mode 10 calibration menu. Don't forget, again, page 2 and 3 are servo variables. We, can, we have another way to adjust them. This is just like kind of reference. You can change them here too, but we have a procedure to adjust this in another video.